Here we go. So um, we're going to review the definition of the inverse of a function. So when you have the inverse of a function, um, what it's saying is that if you were to compose um, one function, so we have function f and function g. And if I was to compose g of x um, into f, x, um, it would equal x. That means for every x in the domain of g. And if I was to do it um, the opposite, compose f of x into g, it would also equal x. Okay. Mm -hmm. So basically, what ends up happening if I put one of the functions inside the other, the output is going to be x. And if the output is x, then these two functions are inverses of each other. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to look here at 4x plus 3 for f of x and g of x equals x minus 3 divided by 4. Mm -hmm. And we're going to determine whether they are inverses or not. By doing that, we're going to first, we're going to do two compositions. And yeah. So I'm going to draw my little line. And we have F composed of G of X, which means that I'm going to substitute in X with X minus three over four. Okay. So when I do that, it becomes four x minus 3 over 4, which equals sorry, I, I dropped my plus 3. Oh. And no one was going to say anything to me. Plus 3. So now we're going to evaluate what 4 divided by 4 is. 1. So they're essentially going to disappear, become Casper the friendly 1. And we're going to be left with x minus 3 plus 3. What ends up being left? X. And that is what we're left with. So because we're left with um, F of X, this equals X. Then and therefore, we can say that F composed of G of X possibly equals blah, 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 blah. We're going to check it on the other side so we can finish our then and there statement. Yes. Um, these are the notes that we started last week. All right, so um, then you're going to check G composed of F of X. So G composed of F of X equals G, and we're substituting in 4X plus 3. So we're going to substitute in 4X plus 3 because that's what F of X is. So everywhere that there's an X in G of X, it becomes 4X plus 3. So we're left with 4X plus 3 minus three all over four. Well, three minus three is zero. So we're left with four X divided by four. Four divided by four is one. So we're left with X. This is asking you to verify, yeah, to show that they're even versus to, so that you're verified. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna find the composition of each other and then, did this equal x? Yes. Did this equal x? Yes. So then and therefore, we could say that f of g of x equals g of f of x, which equals x. So f of x and g of x are inverses. Okay. Again, when you're trying to verify that inverses are, two functions are inverses and using composition. This is why we had to have a composition before we told you guys, before we did it. All right. So uh, moving on, finding the equation of an inverse. So when you're trying to find y equals f of x, there are three simple steps that you're going to follow. Um, before you get started, you want to ask yourself, is it necessary to restrict the domain to get the function to be one-to-one, -one? okay? Restricting the domain saying, I'm going to cut off part of this function so that it passes horizontal line cut. Does that make sense? Um, so that's the first thing you're going to talk to yourself, have a little combo with yourself, and then you move on from there. After a little combo, step one, you're going to in interchange your X and Y in the formula, okay? Uh, after you interchange, you're then going to solve for Y. Once you solve for y, you're going to state the restriction that you set in place. 
and then you're going to label it as f of negative one because it's now your inverse. All right, so we're going to start with the square root function. All right, so to begin with our square root function, we're going to talk about what is its domain and its range, just where we're at. So we have a square root function that was shifted to the left, three units, and down two units. Dude, does that make sense why I can say that? So we have the square root of x plus three minus two. I haven't written it yet. Oh, I just haven't written it yet. Oh, yeah. I was like, I haven't written the restriction yet. Um, okay. And so here we know that with this, with this, we know that X has to be greater than or equal to negative three. Does that make sense? Um, if it's not, then what ends up being underneath my thingy? A zero, and are you, not a zero, a negative, and are you allowed to have a negative? Absolutely not. So for this function, I know that it, I'm going to graph it. So graphing it, uh, you can't have a negative underneath the square root. Right? Am I wrong? Oh. Hold on, guys. Sorry, my son's school is called. All right. So um, that's why. So when I graph this, I know that this starts at negative three, negative two. It's doing this. Right? Um, I can look at a plug in to make this so I can find some better points. I'm not really great at graphing. What if a one? Yeah. Um, if x equals one, that gives me four, and that puts me at zero. So my graph is doing something like we're gonna pretend that it's doing that. That doesn't look as curvish as I needed to. So I'm gonna try that again. That looks too much like a line. No, it's a square root. I'm determined to make it. That's why I need more points. Just be making me mad. Mm. Oh, that's better. We're going to roll with that. We're going to just pretend that it looks beautiful. It's not two curves. It's just one. I know, and I can't, like, six one's all the way over here. Negative two. Negative two, negative one works. Thank you for a little extra guidance. Because I know that it's not going to be above one until it gets here. So I was trying to stay. Oh. oh. In the pen. I was on a roll. So funny. I was on a roll. Oh, my gosh. Why is it? get whatever whatever you it's it's doing this okay it's going yes it's supposed to be doing that um shh, no one cares what you have to say so now we're going to find the inverse of and state its domain so we have our f of x um x has to be greater than or equal to negative three and y is greater than or equal to negative two that's the original before we do anything correct Okay, now find the inverse. So to find the inverse on part B, we are going to switch the places of our X and our Y. So it becomes X equals the square root of Y plus three minus two. And your job is to get your Y by itself because the inverse means that your role of your X and the role of your Y switches. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. My goal is to get y by itself. In order to cancel out a square root, we have to square. And what I do to one side, I do to the other. So now we're down to, I'm going to go up here. 
um, y plus 3 equals x plus 2 squared. I have to get rid of square root. What's the in opposite op inverse operation for square root? All right, what was left to get y by itself? Subtract 3. So my inverse. So my inverse equals x plus 2 squared minus 3. Inverse, yeah. All right, the key thing to remember is that when you have an inverse of a function, what was the domain of that function is now the range of the new function. What was the range of that function is now the domain of that function. So going back here, our original domain was x is greater than or equal to negative 3, and our range was y is greater than or equal to negative 2. For our inverse, those roles are going to switch. So our domain for our inverse is going to be x is greater than or equal to negative 2, and our range is going to be y is greater than or equal to negative 3. And that's because your roles of your x and your y do what? Switch. Wait, on the one above the answer, is that and y? Oh, it's f of x. It's f of x. Okay. So this is my inverse information. So when I graph my inverse, I'm not graphing a full quadratic, am I? I am not. I am graphing a portion of a quadratic, a restricted version of that quadratic. Um, to make graphing easy, I'm just going to flip these points. So if I'm at negative 3, negative 2, I'm now going to be at negative 2, negative 3. If I'm at negative 2, negative 1, I'm now going to be at negative 1, negative 2. If I'm at 1, 0, I'm now going to be at 0, 1. So bear with me as I... Oh, wow. This is better, though. <sighs> there you go. And it's inverse, yeah. That's a lot I think. I feel like I did better on the inverse. So this is my inverse, and this is my original. Okay, I can verify that they're inverses a couple of ways, but visually, you're verifying that they are symmetrical across the y equals x line. So if I was to follow my paper along this imaginary line, would they be symmetrical? And the answer is? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what direction they go. They just have to be symmetrical across the y equals x. The direction of the function has nothing to do with y equals x. This function it would be symmetrical. As long as it's a one-to-one -one function, it's going to be symmetrical across the y equals x. If it tells you to verify that you have a graph and you draw that line instead of like mm -hmm. f of g. Okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. If you didn't have the graph, what would you do? What did we do on example number three? We did composition, right? So I would um, verify using compositions. Okay. okay, I can verify here graphically. All right. I think we have one left in this notes, right? All right, so here we're gonna do it again, but this time instead of a square root, we have a, a cube root. And the beauty about a cube root is that what's special about the domain and range? Anyone else? It's all real numbers. Um, a cube root is all real numbers, and it's one to one. No x's and y's repeat. Um, and so, therefore, when you are graphing your cube root, think about its parent function. Um, the parent function is, sorry, g of x equals x cube cube root of x. So when we have our parent function, the values that we start with 
Huh? It's supposed to be an F. It got a little weird there. Okay, so your parent function is the cube root. Um, for the cube root, you usually use negative one, zero, and one. And the reason being is the cube root of negative one is negative one. The cube root of zero is zero. The cube root of one is one. Okay. Um, the next the next smallest cube root would be eight. Um, and eight's not going to fit on our graph. Do y'all see that? Mm -hmm. It's not. So there's no point of us using eight uh, parent function. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to graph it. It says sketch the function. So thinking about my parent function, what does this plus two tell me happen? Mm -hmm. It shifts to the left two, and then the minus one tells me down one. So all of these values are going to go left and down one. Is that cool? So currently I'm at negative one, negative one. I'm going to go left two, one, two, and mm -hmm. down one. Mm -mm, unless you need the visual of it. Um, zero, zero. Again, I'm going to go left two, one, two, and down one. And then at one, one, I'm going left two and down one. It's not. It has a very small curve in it. How do you know the alpha curve looks like? Because you're supposed to know what the cubic function looks like. So before we. Um, Oh. oh, I went the wrong way. Yeah, I was like, uh, I did this. Ah, it's sideways. It's sideways. I did it the other way. It goes, yeah, no. Yeah. I drew the cubic, not the cube root. I was like, it's me, not you. It's me. I didn't need you to agree with me. Yeah, so it goes. I was gonna fix it. I wasn't trying to go there. I was just trying to sketch it out. Okay. <laughs> just trying to sketch it out. How do I know it's not up and down? Um, because it's a root. Up and down is just the cube root. So like <laughs> show you. This is called a teachable moment. So here we go. So if we have X, which your teacher graphed, um, I hit graph. Uh -huh. And what did I graph? I graphed the cube instead of the root. We go here, we go to the root. I'm going to do not that one. I need math. I need four. There we go. And X. So now you're going to see its inverse goes horizontally instead of vertically. It still has a little curve to it. Yeah, it just goes the other way. Thank you. I don't know why. I wrote the table. Yeah. All right. So when I graph it, here are the points. I know it's that it's the horizontal. Um, And so... You can also see where the points and how they are the same. They're just going, they just hit differently. So yes, you're still going to, so you're still going to be at negative one, negative one, zero, zero, one, one. It's just how the shape turns out differently. And that's because the other values are going to be different. Does that make sense? Yeah. So like if I was the cubic, the cubic, the cube, cubic function two would be at eight. Does that make sense? So I would keep going towards two eight. Mm -hmm. But because I'm the cube root function, it's not two eight, it is at eight two, which is all the way off the page, nowhere near where I can go. Okay, and again, I'm going to try my best to not mess this up. You know, I feel like that's fairly close. Yeah. I mean, I just showed you the exact way it looks. All right. But here, the domain here is that it is one to one. So this is a one to one function, regardless of how well your teacher draws it. 
Um, and so the domain, your X values are going to go from negative infinity to positive infinity. And your Y values are going to go from also negative infinity to positive infinity. No. Okay, so it's inverse. So to find the inverse of G of X, we are switching our X's and our Y's. So we have X equals the cube root of y plus 2 minus 1. I'm going to add one of both sides, and I'm left with x plus 1 equals the cube root of y plus 2. And now I'm going to take the cube of both sides. Computer. Please stop being mean to me. Okay, I take the cube of both sides, and I'm left with y plus 2 equals x plus 1 and cube. And we're going to subtract 2. And so our g in, our inverse of g of x equals x plus 1 cubed minus 2. And again, your domain and your range of your original becomes the range and domain of your inverse. And conveniently here, what's the same? They're going to go from negative infinity to positive infinity, negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, for the sake of our notes, I have half the mind to like kind of just, um, copy and paste a picture, but I'm just going to embarrass myself and draw it out here. Um, so we're at negative three, negative two, right? Um, so my inverse is going to be negative two, negative three. We're here at negative two, negative one. So my inverse is gonna be negative one, negative two. And we're here at negative one, zero. So my inverse is gonna be zero, negative one. And again, I'm gonna do my very, very best to draw the curve. Oh my gosh, my pen. I promise y'all it never does it in algebra two. I don't know why it does it in your class. And then I put in a report to get my computer fixed and no one has came yet. That That's as beautiful as I'm going to get. I feel like that's fairly decent for me. And we're going to roll with it. All right. So we're going to pretend that they are symmetrical. <laughs> across the y equals x hey i feel like that's that's almost identical twins hey, almost. almost like cousins. i know you see the similarity <laughs> i know you see that and i feel like y'all are being haters so um here is my g of x and here is my g inverse of x it is way easier to graph on paper than it is on this little writing board. So hopefully yours looks way more beautiful than mine. But that concludes part B to A. Huh? Whatever I wrote on Canvas. <laughs>